Mr. Shane, it's a great honor to be here to ask this question with Dr. just for this moment. Um, since Charlie's come on, um, I'd like to take the time to applaud him and your entire family. I know you come from dynamic family history, and part of what makes you great as a person and actor is that you've lived your life beyond what you've done on the screen. And Charlie and Amelia are following your footsteps. So Charlie brings a dynamic energy to this world and this country that will be part of the solution, I think. So I think he's to be applauded, as well as all the love that you've poured into this final so of the Thank you very much. So I'm going to go ahead and take a question for you. And you addressed it a bit earlier, and it has to do with your activism. And from my perspective, you're this amazing heroic figure. And I was on the East Coast and very heavily and closely impacted by 9-11. And you're part of a demonstration um, not in our name. And I remember being so hopeful that with someone like Martin Sheen standing up against this, you really might make a difference. But of course, the war did come. And you mentioned how much of what you stood up against hasn't changed. So my question is, overall, um, between everything you've learned about forces that oppose the quality of human life on this planet and everything we've done to stand up against it and everyone we've joined with in that process. How hopeful do you feel that we can actually turn this around and, and make this country great again? I'm very hopeful, and particularly because of the young people. You know, when I was a, uh, a young man, you know, well, there, there was so little uh, uh, opposition to uh, official uh, policy, which meant difference between war and peace. It wasn't until the Vietnam War that young people, and particularly Vietnam veterans themselves, they're the ones who sparked it. They knew from whence it came, you know, and they were trying to uh, lift our country up to a, a higher moral standard, you know. And I think it's taken off, and then you have to remember that there are far many more of us now than there was then. And so the uh, the idea of a protest or of um, positive thinking, if you will, okay, is, is, is exponential and it's, it's more spread out. It's, it's really universal now because of the uh, internet. You know? So, you know, look at what happened last spring in, in, in the Arab world, how one country after another, you know, got the message. And each one inspired the other. Uh, all that started here. I, it was all invented here. So uh, young people have a very, very powerful voice. And I think that, for my own part, because I've dealt with it, I think the biggest problem we have is the peer pressure. All of us. I think that that's it. What do they ever think of me? What will she think of me? What do he think of me? Where, when we need to go into that place deep within ourselves that we know uh, when we meet our true selves and we embrace that person and we know that that it's going to cost you to come out, you know, of that closet with a, uh, you know, with a, with a, a personal truth and it's going to cost you because uh, nothing, you know, worthwhile is without cost. If it is, you have to question its value. It's going to cost you to step out. So it's a peer pressure. Uh, that I think is the biggest problem we have. Uh, you know, none of the great movements in the history of the world, let alone our country, have ever started at the top. It started at the bottom. You know, Reverend King uh, uh, never ran for elective office. He had the most powerful influence on the whole world. You know, Gandhi never ran for office. And you can't think of a more uh, a, a powerful exponent of, of nonviolent change in, in Gandhi. Reverend King got it from, from Gandhi. Uh, so I think that I'm very, very hopeful. Uh, I, 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 I do not see the darkness. I live a very, very joy, uh, joyful life, and I give thanks and praise every day. And, and I have a lot to be thankful for.